let me welcome Katie Levnick to Hinges and Horizons. So Katie, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Jason. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> you are the first one in this new iteration of this podcast. It used to be Virtual Voices, but now we are transitioning it because we want, as we have talked about, we want to focus on those hinge moments in people's lives, those moments when life took a turn, where it went in a new direction, or God did something in a life, or maybe even a painful experience that just really set the trajectory for who a person's going to be. And and then and then what's on the horizon? What's up next for people? And so, Katie, we want to get to know you better. So tell us about a hinge moment in your life. Yeah, uh, well, um, I'm just like, like, as the first one here, just so excited to be here and to be part of this. And um, I was thinking, I've been thinking a lot this last week about those hinge moments in my life. And there are many that I could talk about. I think about my first mission trip as a seventh grader, where I realized like God is not just a person in a book, but like actually living in among us. And, uh, and I also think about my call to ministry and that hinge moment. And then those trials of like adolescence and college, right. That we all face. And, but as the family ministry director at the well, there was this hinge moment that I kind of thought about and have been thinking about just that I just went through a few years ago as a parent myself. And I felt like that was going to be the best hinge moment I could share today. Cause it's still one that I'm working on and hmm. really is changing my life and how I see parenting. So yeah. for those who don't know, I have two boys. Uh, I have Lucas who is four and then Joshua who is two. My husband's name is Brad. And there was this hinge moment uh, a few years ago when Lucas was like really deep in those toddler years. Okay. So he, I think he was probably like right between those like terrible twos and I'm going to call them like traumatic threes or like dramatic threes. Totally. Like, parented a three-year-old you like totally get like everything is the end of the world um but there was this moment where I remember I went to work and I was working in a church at the time and I just went in and was just going on and on about how hard my morning was and how terrible Lucas had been that morning and then all of a sudden I just had this moment where I was almost like I was like an out of self experience where I like heard myself talking and I really just didn't like what I was hearing. Um, and so something, something that's helpful to know as I talk about this is, um, and Brad and I say this all the time, but Lucas and I are like the exact same person in a lot of ways. Um, and so from a very young age, Brad and I recognized that. And we said, you know, Lucas and I, we are going to either have the best of time together or we are going to be bonking heads. Yep. Uh, and so we, we were just like, okay, let's prepare for that. Like, this is going to be our lives because Luke and I both have this very, what we call an extremes personality. Okay. So like for me, that plays out in, I'm either like all in on a project or like eh, barely in, or even like the seasons in the year. So like fall and spring, sure. They're great. But I love that like in the summer, I know it's going to be hot all day and I can just like mentally prepare for being hot and like winter. I know it's going to be cold all day and I can just, okay, it's going to be cold. But like right now when we're in the fall and it's this like you dress cold for cold weather in the morning and then you're sweating like crazy at the end of the day, not for it because it's not one end of the spectrum or the other. And so Lucas, he also has that. So he's either running a hundred miles an hour or he's asleep and he's literally talking until the moment he falls asleep and he's four, right? So this is normal. It makes sense. And so this lucky kid also has my genetics of like that extreme personality. And so going back to that moment uh, where I was just complaining and going on, it was one of those mornings where just getting Lucas out the door was like just a battle. And it was a battle that I had been doing for too long, too many days in a row. And it's just a matter of like getting dressed, like, okay, get in the car. Right. And we just get in these routines and these daily battles. And, um, so that moment where I was just going on and on, uh, and then I got to work to face just the daily stresses of being a working parent. And before I knew it, I caught myself saying things about my kid and just complaining about my kid in a way that I just didn't like the way it sounded. 
And I think absolutely like complaining, we need our outlets, we need that place for that. But as I heard my own voice, I was like, if anybody else was talking about my kid this way, I would like go mama bear in a heartbeat, right? <laughs> like, no right. way would that be acceptable. Um, and so why did I think that that was okay to do? And I was just really convicted by that. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that was a big hinge moment for me. And so I'm someone that likes to think I'm pretty introspective, right? That's the word where I just really evaluate myself all of the time. And I am like, okay, why do I do this? Where does this come from? And I kind of had this realization that I was going to get out of parenting what my attitude got into parenting. Mm -hmm. So if I was just constantly in this attitude of like, oh, my kid is exhausting and he's so hard and I just hate this, then I was going to hate it and it was going to constantly be exhausting and it was going to constantly be hard, right? Yeah. Um, and again, like, absolutely, our kids wear us down and I'm not a perfect parent by any means, right? Like, I snap at my kid and I lose my patience and I do the frustrated voice, but um, I also know that this is a phase of his life. This is just mm -hmm. a blip. Um, and it, even today, there's things that Luke does or even Josh does. And I know this is just a phase and it's going to pass. And so that really helped me to shift my attitude in parenting and just how I approach my kid uh, and just seeing things through the lens of gratitude rather than like frustration. Mm. Um, and that like and that's what I try to carry into like almost every day is like absolutely like the kids do things that are frustrating, but it's like okay, but if the, he doesn't put his own shoes on right now, my kid knows how to tie his own shoes. That's so cool. Like trying to switch my mindset to always see like the positive and the optimistic has really impacted my relationship with them in a lot of ways. Um, and I just think about like developmentally for kids too, like our kids notice things, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we're like constantly like they ask us for something and we're like, Ugh, why do you need that? And frustrated, they're going to pick up on that. Like we're their constant in their safe space. And if we are constantly like everything you do is annoying, then mm -hmm. how much trust are they going to have for us? I know when I think about like my end game as a mom, like I want to be like that mom where like they respect me, but they're also like, I want to hang out with my mom. She's the coolest. And I know that in their teen years, they're going to hate me because I'm going to be like, hey, your brain development's doing this right now. And like, I just know that and we're prepared for that. But I want to be one of those moms that's like, my mom's the coolest and like their friends want to hang out with their mom. And that's not going to happen if I'm like constantly frustrated with them. Mm. Um, and so... I think back to that moment again, and I just, that whole like idea of like, this is just a phase and it's going to pass. Um, when, when someone's like pregnant or has a newborn baby, right? Everyone says like, oh, it goes so fast. And you're just like, okay, everyone's saying that to me right now. Um, but it truly does. Right. And so if we only can see our kids through the lens of how they're frustrating, we're going to miss the beauty in the moment of what's only a blip in their life or our lives together. Um, so like that newborn phase, that's a phase, right? The toddler phase, it's a phase. Same with those teen years, like that's a phase and it's going to pass. And then someday you're going to miss it. Right. Yeah. And so that's the, like, that was a big hinge moment for me and just how I approach my kids and um, has really transformed me as a mom. And being mm -hmm. able to really appreciate them as like creations of God and children of God in a totally different way. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the interesting things you said right at the very, very beginning even was that this is a hinge moment that's still working on you. Right. And I think that is such a powerful idea behind a lot of these moments that we have in life that really kind of change the trajectory of how we're approaching things is that the best ones, you know, in the best circumstances, they keep working on us. Right. And they keep, we keep going back to that. Okay, I gotta, I gotta remember that. I, I learned that before. I can learn it again, you know. And um, and then I, I think one of the other things that you're you're pointing us to that's so helpful, Katie, is that there's this is like it's like compound interest almost, right? Like when you invest in your kids and you show up with gratitude, like you're not just making that moment a better moment, but you're like building interest towards the type of relationship that you want to have for the long haul. And, and that's a really beautiful thing. And of course, you've got to give yourself grace uh, because you're not going to always show up perfectly like you're talking about. And I can attest to that too. Um, but when we are 
trying to show up differently with that gratitude in mind, um, with that patience in mind, like seeing things from a different lens as you're talking about, then that, you know, builds towards the type of relationship where there's room for trust, right? And there's room for better, better dialogue. Um, and I can only imagine the types of conversations that you're going to have as your boys get older and older and start experiencing more and more of the world um, and the types of questions they'll ask. And they will ask them because they know that their mom is championing them and trusting them. And um, and that's such a beautiful thing to build upon. So thanks for sharing your hinge moment and one that is is so uh, prevalent in so many lives. And uh, and also, like you like you said, we'll continue to work on you. Um, yeah. I just was, I was just thinking as you were sharing too, like, uh, I think a lot of times this is taught in just what's around us too about parenting, right? Like any show you watch or like, if you scroll through like Instagram reels, right? Like, it's always like the mom who's just had it with her hair in a mess and like drinking her like six glass of wine or whatever it may be. Right. Um, and it's like, okay, there's not room for like six glasses of wine, but like, there's like those moments where, yes, you like, you need to check out and just do what you need to do for you. Um, but also it's like, it's around us everywhere that like our kids are exhausting and our lives are hard. Um, and if we're always thinking of our lives in general from like, this is so hard, that's what it's going to be. Um, and so our minds are just really powerful tools yeah. that God has given us to change how we see things. Um, and I'm someone like on a strengths finder, like positivity is like way up there. Like I tend to just be painfully optimistic. Uh, and so for me to like, as a parent be like, uh, it's just like, who is this person? Like, that's right. not how I want to be a mom. And that's really just been something yeah. I've been journeying through. So, well, I couldn't help but think of what Paul writes. And I think it's Philippians four, where like, whatever is noble, whatever is beautiful, whatever is pure, whatever is holy, like think on such things. And I, and I, I always love inserting the word dwell on such things, like, because like when you do that, then you're cultivating that, right? When you're, when you're cultivating patience and gratitude and you're trying to see like, oh my gosh, like celebrate your kid. He can tie his shoes at four. This is amazing. Like when you're dwelling on those things, you're, you're kind of rewiring your neural pathways. You know, Paul's kind of like, you know, doing uh, neuroscience before anybody else. Right. And so it's this beautiful, um, idea that we have not only biblically but we now see it in science that when our brain dwells on something that is likely to be that was amazing for all those listening the cat just walked in front of the camera and uh well, all we got was fur it was pretty pretty special so yeah when we do that when we think on those things we are rewiring our neural pathways and we're setting ourselves up to show up differently in the future and so it's such a beautiful beautiful thing. So Katie, tell us a little bit about what's on the horizon for you. Yeah. So, uh, as I like was thinking about this, this recording today and thinking about like horizon, um, I think for me, the horizon is that like, I now have a tool that I can utilize, right? Like you just pointed to, uh, that verse in, sorry, did you say Philippians? Yeah. Okay. And I, I think too, about like, the love passage, right? We all know it from weddings, like first Corinthians 13, like just how we practice, like, like love is patient, love mm -hmm. is kind, love is gentle mm -hmm. in how we approach our kids. And, um, and I know that as I go into like these next few years of parenting, like next fall in 2022, Luke will enter kindergarten and, um, that'll continue to change things. So the horizon is that like, as we enter into the future, I feel like I'm going with like a better step towards the mm -hmm. future in my mm -hmm. parenting and how I do things. And I, I really do want to just push to like, I really am not a perfect parent. And so I hope no one's listening going like, oh, look at her getting it all together. Like, definitely not. Like just this morning, Luke was just like hanging out in his underwear and I was like, you need to put clothes on like right now. Like we need to leave. Like it is life, right? Um, but that doesn't like define how I see him the rest of the day. That's the difference. Right. Um, and so like, that's the tool for me going into the horizon. The next step uh, is just being able to appreciate where my kids are and what God is doing in their lives right now. Cause it's a lot and it's awesome to be part of it. Yeah. 
Oh, that's really beautiful. I really appreciate that, Katie. Thanks for sharing with us. And thanks for being our first uh, person to connect with on Hinges and Horizons. Uh, it's an honor to get to know you a little better. And we can't wait for, for your horizon and to be a part of that journey. So thanks for, uh, thanks for all you do. Yeah, thanks for having me. This was awesome. Thank you.